My name? It is Aladdin, the son of Mustafa, the tailor. The story I would tell you is a most unusual one. In a far-off day, when the land of China was called Cathay, in a time when there were sultans and princesses and evil magicians who cast their spell on those who roused their anger, I lived with my mother in a modest little house close to the marketplace. My father had died, and we lived on the little money my mother made by selling the cotton she spun and the small tasks I was given within our town. How little did we suspect how our fortune would change. One day, as I swept the flour from the shop of Basra, the bread maker, I was approached by a stranger dressed in a long silken robe woven with threads of many colors, and on his feet were slippers of soft satin. May Allah smile upon you this day, my son. May you also receive his blessing, sir. Are you not Aladdin, son of Mustafa the tailor? I... I am Aladdin. But how... Your mother and father are well? My father is dead. Ah, what tragedy is this I hear? My brother dead? Your... your brother? He did not tell you he had a brother? Then look upon me, Aladdin, for I am your uncle. Though I had never heard my father speak of a brother, I was pleased to know that so richly dressed a gentleman was my uncle. My mother also was pleased to see him, for she believed my father's brother to be dead for many years. Supper that evening was like none I had tasted before, for my uncle came laden with meats and fruit and wine. On the second day, he took me to the shop of the finest cloth merchant and dressed me in such clothes that left me speechless. Then he told me he had a surprise for me on the side of the mountain beyond the city gates. As we left the city and began our climb up the mountain, the rays of the sun beat down upon me, and I grew weary. Come, Aladdin, why do you stop? Oh, I grow weary, Uncle. It is but a few steps more. See, see there where the path winds its way between the high rocks. We continued for a short distance. Then my uncle motioned for me to stop. Here, this is the place. I, I see nothing. In a moment, my surprise will be revealed to you. First, you must gather up these few tree branches on the ground and set them in a pile. Yes, Uncle. That is good. That is good. Pile them neatly. Now the last piece. Good. Now I kindle the fire. Now I sprinkle a bit of this powder upon the flames and... Uncle, what is it? Why does the ground shake? You will see. A terror filled me as the ground shook beneath my feet. As I watched, a strange thing happened. The pile of burning branches suddenly disappeared, and in its place lay a square flat stone with a ring attached to the center of it. Now, my nephew, grasp the ring and pull upon it. What will happen? Fear nothing. Beneath this stone lies a great treasure which is to be yours, if you do exactly as I say. Now, grasp the ring. Yes, uncle. It is heavy. But you are strong, and soon you will also be wealthy. Excellent. Now, Aladdin, listen carefully. Yes, Uncle. Go down the steps. At the bottom you will find a door which opens into three great halls. Go directly through the halls without stopping, and you will find yourself in a garden of trees heavy with fruit. About the garden is a stone wall, and in a small opening in the wall you will find a lighted lamp. Bring the lamp to me. Here, wear this ring. The glow from its stone will show you the way. Now, go. I did as my uncle directed, and soon I found myself in the garden of fruit trees. In a corner of the wall, the lamp glowed. It was an old lamp and had lost its luster. As I poured out the oil, I wondered why my uncle would want such a worn lamp. A short time later, I made my way back and came to the foot of the ladder. When my uncle saw me, he eagerly reached down his hand. Quickly, quickly, hand me the lamp. Help me up the ladder. No, first the lamp. But uncle, I... I am not your uncle, but a magician from the east. I brought you here only to get the lamp, for if I were to descend the ladder, I would die by my own magic. Now, the lamp. I cannot climb the ladder and also hold the lamp. You must help me. No, you must manage by yourself until I can reach the lamp. It is impossible. Then remain there forever. No, wait. Do not leave me here. 
Angrily, the magician lowered the stone, and I was in darkness blacker than the night. For some time, I remained so, crying out for help, but no help came. Perhaps I thought to myself, if I prayed for help, and as I raised my hands in prayer, I managed to rub the ring which the magician had given me and had forgotten to take back. As I did... What is your wish, master? From out of nowhere appeared a huge figure, dressed in the richest of brocades and satins. As I stared up at him, speechless, he again spoke. What is your wish, master? Who... who are you? I am the genie of the ring. When you rubbed the ring, you released me to do your bidding. I am at your command, master. Name what you wish, and it shall be granted. I want only to be out of this place. It shall be as you desire. As the genie spoke, there was a puff of smoke. And when it cleared, I found myself outside my father's house. I told my mother all that had happened and showed her the old lamp which I still had with me. Now, mother, let us eat, for my adventure has given me a great appetite, I can tell you. Eat? Alas, my son, there is no food in the house, and there will be none until I take my cotton to sell in the marketplace. And I have nothing, except this old lamp. Well, perhaps if it were clean, it would bring a nice price. Here, let me wipe it off, and we'll see what... <gasps> mother, she's fainted. What is your wish, master? Why have you returned? I did not rub the ring. I am also the genie of the lamp. When your mother rubbed it, she summoned me. Your wish, master? I wish for something to eat. Your wish is granted. <gasps> In the name of Allah, it is a banquet for a king. May it satisfy your hunger, master. If ever you have need of me again, you have only to rub the lamp and I will appear. Now I must return to the lamp whence I came. Mother, mother, wake up. See what we have to eat. What? 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 You, you will not believe what delicacies there are here. Eleven? How came we by such food? The genie of the lamp caused it to appear. It is sorcery, my son, sorcery. And will bring us nothing but unhappiness. Sell the lamp, Aladdin, and summon the genie no more. Oh, no, mother. We shall keep the lamp and the magic ring. And we shall never again be in want. As the days passed, I summoned the genie but a few times only. For food and clothing, and for that which I most desired. A home of great beauty in which my mother could live out her days in comfort. Now that I had all I desired, I was free to pursue the innermost secret of my heart, to seek the hand of the Sultan's daughter in marriage. We had exchanged glances in the marketplace one wonderful day, and I knew our love was destined to be. She was beautiful beyond all beauty, and were I to take her as my wife, my happiness would be complete. I gave my mother a basket of many precious jewels fashioned in the likeness of fruit and directed her to take them to the Sultan as a dowry for the princess. And I waited most anxiously for her return. Aladdin! Aladdin, are you at home? Here I am, mother. Did you deliver the gift of jewels to the Sultan? What was his answer? The gift he accepted with amazement and pleasure. And what of the princess? He has consented to her marriage. Mother! But, upon the advice of the wazir... The Sultan requests that you wait three months before you are wed. Three months? For what reason must I wait three months? We do not question the wishes of the Sultan, my son. Have patience. Three months will pass as quickly as the drifting sands of the desert. But the days did not pass quickly. And when two months had gone, my mother returned home from the marketplace one day with most disturbing news. It is so, it is so, Aladdin. The whole marketplace hummed with the news. The wazir has convinced the sultan that it should be his son and not you to wed the princess. But did the sultan not give you his word? He did, but the wazir is a clever man. And we do not know what he said to the sultan when they were alone. And are the princess and the wazir's son already husband and wife? The marriage is to take place in three days' time. 
Even now, the Wasir's son and the princess journey toward the palace of the betrothed. They must be stopped. She doesn't love him. But Aladdin, it is the wish of the Sultan. You cannot stop. It was also the wish of the Sultan that I marry the princess. And it is right because I love her. Give me the lamp, mother, that I may summon the genie. When the genie appeared, I commanded him to bring the princess to me. Before the blinking of an eyelash, the princess was snatched from the presence of the wazir's son and stood before me. She was frightened and trembling and beautiful. How, how did I come to this place? You are Aladdin. Do not be frightened, most beautiful of princesses. I am Aladdin, to whom the sultan your father promised your hand in marriage. You were brought here at my command. But I do not understand. I am betrothed to another, wretched though I am. We were on our way to the palace to be wed, when suddenly there was a great rush of wind, and I found myself here. You are rightfully mine, princess. Only to me will you be wed. But my father will have his way. Your father will keep his promise as it was made to me. Summoning the genie, I directed him to return the princess to the sultan's palace. The second night and the third, he was again to bring the princess to me. The genie did as I commanded. At the end of the three days, the wazir's son, so terrified to have had his betrothed snatched from him for three nights, pleaded with the sultan to release him from his betrothal to the princess. This the sultan did, and before the setting of another sun, the princess and I were wed. For my wife, I commanded the genie to build a palace of the finest marble, set with jasper, agate, and other precious stones. The lattices of the windows were to be set with diamonds and rubies, and there was to be a stable of the finest Arabian steeds. By the following day, the palace was completed, and there I took my princess to live in contentment and blissful happiness. But far away, in the land of Africa, the evil magician had heard of my good fortune, which he knew could have been mine only through the magic of the lamp. Greater than before was his desire to have the lamp. And so he came to the city where my palace stood, and he waited. Then came the time when I left for a hunting trip. This was the moment for which the magician had been waiting. Disguising himself as a ragged merchant, he bought a dozen lamps of gleaming copper, placed them in a basket, and went about the city crying. New lamps for old. Who would like a new lamp for an old? Through the streets he went, crying out his wares, until he came at last to the palace where the princess sat at the window, sewing upon her tapestry. Holding out one of his shining lamps, he smiled up at the princess. Oh, beauteous princess, will you not buy a shining lamp of gleaming copper? I have no need for a lamp. But see how this one glistens and sparkles in the sun. It is a treasure for a palace such as yours. I am not a wealthy merchant, lovely princess, but to you I give this lamp as a gift. I ask only in return that you give me a lamp that is old and worn as a memory of your beauty and grace. I would have a heart of stone if I did not respond to such flattery, old man. Wait here. In my husband's room is a lamp which is older than the oldest lamp in your basket. I will bring it to you. A million thanks, O oh wondrous princess. May Allah bless this house seven times seven. And may Aladdin be seventy times seven before he discovers where I have taken the lamp. <laughs> when he had exchanged the worthless copper lamp for the precious magic lamp, the magician hurried to a secret hiding place outside the gates of the city. Then, when darkness had fallen, he summoned the genie of the lamp and commanded him to transport him, together with the princess of the palace, to far-off Egypt. So it was that when I returned, I found the palace and my beloved princess gone. Deep was my grief as I wandered about the city in search of some trace of the princess. Then I was told of the old lamp merchant, and I knew what had happened. I must summon the genie. But how? The magic lamp was in the hands of the magician. All at once, I remembered the magic ring which I still wore. Quickly, I rubbed my hand over it, and the genie appeared. 
What is your desire, master? I command you to return to me the princess and the palace. Such a great wish can be made only by him who possesses the magic lamp. Then I command you to carry me from this place to where the magician has carried the princess. You have only to take your place on this flying carpet, and your wish shall be granted, master. As I sat upon the carpet, it rose quickly into the air, high up over the city. Soon the city disappeared from view, and I saw only water underneath me. On and on flew the magic carpet, and then... It began to descend. And at last it came to rest outside the gates of a palace, which I recognized as my own. With no thought that the magician might hear me, I called out the name of my beloved princess. In a moment, she was in my arms. Oh, oh, Aladdin, I have been so frightened. When I exchanged the old lamp for a new one, I did not know it was a magic lamp, nor that the old merchant was in truth an evil magician. Weep not, my princess. I shall get back the magic lamp from the sorcerer, and we will return to our own land. Where is the lamp kept? The magician has never let it from his sight. Then this is what we must do. You will put on your most dazzling dress and receive the magician with smiles, as though you love him. Then you shall ask him to dine with you, as you wish to taste the wine of his country. And then... When he leaves you to go for the wine, this is what you will do. Take this white powder and place it in this cup. The princess did as I said, and when the sorcerer, truly believing the princess loved him, went to fetch his best bottle of wine, into his cup the princess placed the white powder which I had given to her. When he returned, he filled the two wine glasses and when he emptied his, he fell to the floor, lifeless. I immediately seized the magic lamp, and summoning the genie, commanded him to return us and the castle to our own land, which he did. Now the princess and I live happily in our palace, and the magic lamp, well, it has brought us all we desire, and I have given it to someone who has more need of it than I. Perhaps he, too, has shared it with another, and that one with still another. So, if you should chance to be strolling through the marketplace, and your eyes should light upon an old, worn lamp, which is sadly in need of repair, think twice before you pass it by. It may be a magic lamp. <laughs> May the good fortune of Allah go with you, my friend! Mm -hmm.